Algebra 2. In this concept, we're going to solve quadratics by factoring. And in, remember that a quadratic um, usually is in the form of a trinomial. It has three terms. You learn this in Algebra 1, and this is one of the most important skills and processes in algebra. We're going to do the same method over and over, so pay attention to it and try to recognize the patterns, and I'll try to point them out to you as well. So let's get down a couple definitions. We're going to be working with the zero product property. So if the product of two factors, that means two things multiplying together, is zero, then one or both of the factors must equal zero. We're going to use that logical thought every time we solve one of these problems. Another bit of vocabulary is that solutions of a quadratic equation these are the values of x when y equals 0. So our answers will be in the form x equals usually two different numbers. Now solutions of quadratics can be real numbers, and all of our solutions in this concept will be real numbers, but they also can be non-real as well. So quickly, let's look through the process of factoring. Every time you want to think through the proce this process, the first thing you're going to look for is a greatest common factor. Remember, it can be a combination of number and or variables. Then, after you've done that, if there is a greatest common factor, you're going to examine the number of terms because that will tell you the direction to go in factoring. If there are two terms, you're going to look for that special factoring pattern that you learned in the last conce concepts, the difference of squares. If there are three terms, you're going to look for the factoring method or try the factoring method that we're going to learn in this concept called quadratic factoring and in specifically it's called the grouping method and you can use it when you factor any factorable trinomial. So here are the steps are the steps and we're going to do an example <clears throat> as we go over them. So the first one is that you want to make sure that your quadratic is in general form. So ax squared plus bx, and then if there's an equal sign, then it needs to be equal to zero. Then you need to pick out the a, b, and c coefficients. Step one is you're going to find two numbers that multiply to give you a times c and add to give you b. I just use this little x graphic to help me organize. So my top number is a times c, and my bottom number is b. There's nothing special or magical about that. It's just an organizer. And then when I figure out the numbers that will allow me to do that, I put them in the side. So 6 times 2 will give me 12. 6 plus 2 will give me 8. <clears throat> and we are breaking apart this trinomial. So now I'm going to rewrite the trinomial. And then step 2, we're going to rewrite the middle term so in this case it's 8x using the two numbers that we found. So I'm going to rewrite 8x as plus 6x plus 2x. And you see how I've done that in red. You can tell that we what we've got is the same thing. 6 and 2 are 8. But we're just breaking this trinomial apart to factor it. Step 3 says is we're going to group the first two and the last two terms together in the easiest way possible. We're just going to uh, draw a short dividing line. It should not extend past that line of the equation. Look at the first two terms, x squared and 6x, factor out a greatest common factor, which would just be an x. Notice I put what's left in parentheses. Now look at the second two terms, 2x and 12. <clears throat> Whatever the sign is in front of the third term, you're going to put that sign in front and then I can factor a 2 out. Now in parentheses, if this trinomial is factorable, then you should have the same things, x plus 6. Now that becomes our common term. So now we're going to factor out that common term of x plus 6. And what we have left is just an x plus 2 equals 0. Those are our factors. Our solutions is to solve. So now we're going to use that zero product property. I have two things multiplying together to equal 0. I'm going to set each of them equal to zero in its own little equation and solve. So the two solutions that we have are x equals negative 6 and x equals 2. If we plugged those numbers one at a time back into the original equation, we would get zero. 
So you can see now that I've labeled the x plus 6 and the x plus 2. Those are called factors. And then when we go ahead and use the zero product property rule and solve, those are solutions. All right, now we're just going to do the same thing over and over. So the first thing on number one is we need to get this into standard form. So you're going to need to add that 14x over. Then you're going to pick out a, b, and c. And if the video goes quick for you, then you just need to pause to catch up at any time. So we're looking for two numbers that multiply to give us 33 and add to give us 14. So 3 and 11. And you can just go through the factors um, of what will multiply to give you 33 until you find them. Then you're going to take that rearranged quadratic and you're going to divide up the middle term using those two numbers. Then remember you're going to group the first two and the second two together just using that short dividing line. You look at the first two terms and factor out the common factor there which is x and the second two which would be 11. If the trinomial is factorable then you will have the same terms in the parentheses and then that becomes the common factor that comes to the front. So x plus 3 times x plus 11. Those are our factors. If we multiplied them back, we'd get our original trinomial. We need to solve, so we're going to set them each equal to 0 using that zero product property rule. So our solutions are negative 3 and negative 11. All right, number 2. So hopefully right away you see that we need to rearrange. We need to get the quadratic in standard form and set it equal to 0. So we're going to need to add the 15x over. Now I look at those terms and I notice that 5 will go into each of them. So I need to factor out that greatest common factor. So I just reverse distribute and bring it to the front. Now I'm going to focus at what is in the parentheses and factor that. So over to the side, I'm going to pick out a, b, and c of that trinomial in the parentheses. So two numbers that I'll multiply to give me 2 and add to give me 3. Well, that's simple. It's just 2 and 1. So now on the left, I'm going to take that quadratic. I'm going to divide up those, that middle term using the 2 and the 1, and then group the first two and last two together. So see how we're just doing the same process over and over. Factor out a greatest common factor which in the first two terms is just an x, and then in the second two terms is a 1. Notice that you have an x plus 2 and an x plus 2, so that factors out to the front, and you're left with simply x plus 1. So if you multiplied those back together, you would almost get what you started with. We need to bring the 5 down. So now we have all the factors that we can multiply together to get our original problem. Our directions say to solve though, so the first thing to solve would be simply just to divide both sides by zero. Then set each of those parentheses equal to zero and solve. So our solutions are negative two and negative one. Just a reminder to pause the video if it is going quick for you so that you can get all of these notes down. All right, let's do this process again. So notice that we are in standard form so we simply pick out a, b, and c. If you have subtractions in front, those work as negatives. So 2 times negative 6 is negative 12. Two numbers that multiply to give us negative 12 and will add to give us negative 1. Well, 4 and 3 will give us 12. And if we make the 4 negative and add those, we get negative 1. So now let's take our original trinomial and then let's just rewrite that middle term using our two numbers <clears throat> and then group the first two and the last two together. Look for a greatest common factor in the first two terms. I bet you see it, 2x. And then in the second two, notice we always put the sign in front, plus 3. Now we have a common expression of x minus 2 and then what we have left is 2x plus 3. So these are our factors. We're going to set them each equal to 0 because our directions say to solve. We have to subtract the 3 and then divide by 2. So our solutions are x equals 2 and x equals negative 3 halves. If we were to plug those back in to our original equation, we would get 0. All right, 
<clears throat> practice makes perfect. So let's do another. Let's pick out A, B, and C. So A is 5, B is negative 18, and C is 9. We're looking for two numbers that multiply to give us 5 times 9, 45, and add to give us negative 18. Well, I know 15 times 3 is 45, and if I combine them, I get 18. So I just make them both negative, so that together they'll give me negative 18. Then we're going to rewrite that middle term using the negative 15 and the negative 3. We can factor out a 5x from both of those, and we'll be left with x minus 3. We can factor out a negative 3 from both of the second terms. Whatever sign is in front of the third term goes with it. So now we have a common expression of x minus 3 with 5x minus 3 left. These are our factors. Our directions say to solve, however, so we'll continue setting them equal to 0 and getting our two solutions. So our solutions are x equals 3 and x equals 3 fifths. Now it's time for independent practice. I want you to pause the video and attempt to factor and solve these two. Notice that the first problem is not in standard form, so you're going to need to adjust to do that. Pause the video now. All right, you're back. <clears throat> so I'm going to quickly talk through example one. In picking out a, b, and c, the two numbers that I'll multiply to give us negative 8 and add to give us negative, positive 2 are 4 and negative 2. So you'll split up that middle term. Factor out your common factors. And remember in the second one, the negative needs to come out front and then factor out your common expression. And set those each equal to zero to get the solutions. All right, and our second one, I'm gonna speed this up just a little bit. So we factor all the way down and get our common expression, x minus 5, and then we have 2x plus 1 left. We do that final step of setting them each equal to 0. So subtract the 1 and divide by 2. So there are our two solutions. Finally, look at, at this factoring flow chart. Factoring is a process, a flow, flowing process. So you can look at this flow chart as you do practice in Math Excel, and even as you take the quiz and do the unit test. So you simply ask yourself the questions um, that will take you through the process. Do I have a greatest common factor? How many terms do I have? If I have two terms, it is, a, is it a difference of squares? If I have three terms, can I factor it using the trinomial factoring? And then finally, what do my directions say? Am I solving? or am I just factoring? All right, this concludes the notes on factoring and solving trinomials.